Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And today we're going to get into some history surrounding the importance of the Jews. All right. Now, as we know in the Holy Scriptures, all right, the term Jew, all right, is short for the tribe of Judah. All right. Or, all right, it can, you know, um, be a label. All right. Or a term used for all three tribes of the southern kingdom. All right. Which consists of Judah, Benjamin and Levi. All right. Those are the Jews. All right. And when you read the history of our nation, it was the Jews. All right. Who are responsible. All right. For keeping the traditions. All right. Associated with the temple. All right. The Torah history and teachings alive. All right. Um, as there were great rebellions amongst our people who left off from the ways of following the most high God, Yahweh. All right. They became complete heathen, which leads you into the history of the New Testament, where you see the term Greek or Gentile. All right. And um, we'll tap into that. Um, now, I saw a video uh, where Romans, the third chapter was used. Um as you have particular camps, they'll say Apostle Paul's writings aren't, you know, uh, divinely inspired. All right. But when it benefits them or if they can misconstrue what he's saying to make it fit what they're saying, they'll use it. All right. But the things that condemn them. All right. They don't want nothing to do with. All right. This is a hypocrisy. All right. But this particular camp. Um. I saw Alazar using the scripture, Romans 3 and 1, it says, What advantage have then the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? All right. Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. All right. And um, this particular camp says that Paul contradicts himself because in certain parts of the scriptures, he says there is no profit you know, of circumcision. And here you're seeing, he says it is profitable. All right. So we're going to tap into the history of what Paul is talking about here. And may you brothers and sisters be edified. Now, when you understand, before we tap into this, uh, understanding of Romans three, all right, we must understand that these letters, all right, that Paul wrote or that any of the prophets wrote weren't written in chapter verse form. All right. They were just divided that way. All right. For us in this time, as the Lord spoke in the book of uh, Isaiah, the 34th chapter, he would divide these words by line so that we can keep them and have them here in these latter days. These words will be divided into us. But this is an ongoing letter. So when you go to Romans, the second chapter. Paul is uh, addressing, you know, some issues that were going on amongst the church as you had many Jews boasting in the law, you know, um, you know, trying to keep, you know, the uh, Israelite foreigners who were raised as Greeks and Romans out of the fold. And that was a constant back and forth. And we're going to show you the um, the uh, starting point. All right. That led to this uh, back and forth. That's very important that, you know. All right. In order to be a teacher or a believer of the Bible, this history uh, that we're going to go into um, is very important. OK. And many of the Christians who, um, you know, combat us, you know, they come against us, you know, with this whole Jew. All right. And Greek or Jew and Gentile, you know, narrative of the uh, New Testament. But they have no understanding of why. See, if you don't understand what we're, go we're getting ready to tap into, then you're 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 um, you're going to be completely lost when you read the New Testament. Most people think that they can just open the New Testament without understanding. All right. The history leading into the New Testament, which is very important. The book of Maccabees as well. OK, which is history needed to know and understand that gives you a backdrop leading into. All right. 
these talking points of Jew and Gentile, all right, or circumcision, all right, um, or uncircumcision. But when you read here in Romans 2 and 28, it says, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. And when you look at the different, you know, uh, sects or camps that were around when Yahweh Shai came on the scene and as the disciples went out preaching and as Paul went out preaching, all right, many of them were um, very, very serious about outward appearance, fringes, you know, phylacteries, you know, and things and traditions that were passed down as they were Jews, which, again, as we're going to show you, that was important for our nation for those Jews to keep those customs and traditions associated with the Torah, okay, and the laws and the, and the, and the, the temple and everything else. It's just that when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, all right, the standard of being made right with the Most High changed, and this caused an uproar. So it says, for he is not a Jew that is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is uh, outward in the flesh, okay? So they were basing, you know, their righteousness with the most high, you know, on things like circumcision, all right, which can be of the physical penis, as well as the way you were raised, you were cultivated. Circumcision, you know, goes into a cutting in the flesh, but there's also a spiritual aspect of circumcision, all right? Ultimately, when you were raised as a Jew, you were raised circumcised, you were cultivated in the ways of Yahweh Bashmi Shai, the ways of righteousness. All right, but Paul is saying here, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Okay, now let's get this scripture real quick. Okay, there's a, I believe it's in Philippians. Paul makes this statement. Boom. This is the book of Philippians. All right. Three and two. It says, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, which is those Jews who did not want to accept Yahweh Shai. OK. Who were um, boasting in the law, trying to, you know, you know, bind, you know, the uh, Gentiles to the, you know, the keeping of the law and this and that. Right. It says, for we are the circumcision which worship the most high in spirit, all right, and rejoice in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach and have no confidence in the flesh. All right, and then Paul breaks it down, all right, that he could have confidence in the, in the flesh because ultimately he was uh, circumcised the eighth day, all right, a tribe of Benjamin. So he had his records. He was born a uh, Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. OK, he goes into his his history that ultimately he, if anyone could boast about keeping the laws, he could. All right. But he understood the importance of Yahweh Shai and how this church would be built would be through mercy. All right. So the Gentiles were uh, added into the fold through faith. All right. But right here, he says we are of the circumcision, which wor worship the most high in spirit. So the true circumcision is an inward thing. All right. A spiritual thing. OK, where you're cutting off all right, the uh, old man and mentality and renewing your mind. OK, I mean, one second. OK, so Romans 2 and 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. We just showed you the true circumcision is a spiritual thing. OK, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and of the spirit and not in the letter. All right. Meaning you're 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 walking it. You're doing it. All right. You 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 have a renewed mind and you have a right spirit. Many of those who were perfect and raised in the laws and customs who boasted in that their spirit wasn't right. OK, they were rejoicing in the letter, meaning, you know, the uh, that first covenant standard. All right. But their their spirits weren't right. They were off. Why do you think Yahweh Shai was constantly going back and forth with them? OK, so it says, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. All right. And when you look up this term Jew. OK, we know the Hebrew word is Yahweda. OK, but as you see here. 
Jewish, all right, which we know we don't deal with the term Jewish, but a Jew as respects of birth, origin, or religion, all right, meaning you were a natural branch. You were of that, you know, uh, surviving number, all right, that survived the Greco-Roman, you know, uh, assault, you know, forcing you on their idols. You had particular Jews who stuck to the traditions, and that's what we're going to get into and the importance of that history, all right? But what Paul is saying here, that he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and in spirit and not in a letter whose praise is not of men, but of the Most High. So then he continues in Romans, the third chapter, okay, saying, well, what advantage have the Jew or what profit is there of circumcision? Because this is a question that can be asked. So you, you're saying that, the Jew, you know, being a Jew, all right, being of that surviving batch, remnant, who stuck to the traditions, all right, who 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 fought, you know, for the temple. You mean you, uh, kept circumcising their children? You mean that there's no profit to that? Well, yes, there's a profit to that. Okay, he says much, all right, every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. So this is what I wanted to deal with. Because Paul is not saying, all right, being circumcised physically gives you advantage in a form that you can be saved, all right, because ultimately you were raised as a Jew, all right, or that you were circumcised, all right? That's not what he's saying. He's basically going into the history, all right, that the advantage the Jews had, all right, you know, or, you know, the circumcision is that ultimately what was committed unto them were the oracles of the most high. Okay. Let's read this in the uh, NLT. Let's see how it's worded. Okay. And then we'll get into some history. All right. This is Romans three and one. It says, then what's the advantage of being a Jew? As in the prior chapter, he's telling you, all right, that all of the outward appearance and, you know, being physically circumcised by the, the penis, that's not what makes you right with the most high. All right. But inwardly, all right, being circumcised is, is really the uh, importance. So then he says that then what's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value, all right, in the ceremony of circumcision? All right, Paul says, yes, there are great benefits. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of the Most High, all right, and that's the oracles of the Most High, okay? As a matter of fact, let me pull this up again. And have it in the King James as well. Because I want to look up the word oracle. Okay. What was committed unto the Jews were the oracles of the Most High. All right. And again, that's very important to our nation. Being that the Northern Kingdom. All right. Left the Assyrian captivity. Okay. And pretty much came over to the Americas. It was important all right, that the Jews stay back in the Babylonian captivity. And we'll show you as the history went on, you always had particular Jews who fought for the temple as the heathen would seek to destroy the temple and seek for us to be separated from our power. All right, there was always remnants of the Jews in Judah, Benjamin, and Levi who stuck to the traditions, who stuck to the Torah, you know, the circumcision, the keeping of the temple, the ordinances that were, you know, synonymous with that first covenant. It was very profitable, all right, and uh, beneficial to our nation, all right, that they stayed in Jerusalem, all right, and as we'll show you, they were committed the oracles of the Most High. The word oracle in the Greek is logion, a brief utterance, a divine oracle. Now, what is an oracle? oracle is pretty much a prophecy all right or ultimately it can uh go into divine all right communication meaning the most high is speaking to you all right through a priest a prophet you know of course we know that's through yahweh shai but as you can see a priest acting as a medium through whom advice or prophecy was sought from the gods in classical antiquity okay a place in which divine advice or prophecy was sought. Okay. A person uh, or thing, yada, 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 a guide. 
okay, a see, a seer, a diviner, a prophet, okay, prophecies, okay, so they, you know, these Jews were sticking to the prophecies, they understood what was written, you know, uh, about, you know, particular things, they passed down those traditions, all right, and as you see here in the New Testament, all right, words or utterances of the Most High, which can be found in what? The Law and the Prophets, okay, of the contents of the Mosaic Law, you see? So, to the Jews, okay, were committed the oracles of the Most High, okay? Because when you understand the history, going to Daniel, the seventh chapter, okay, after Solomon's kingdom rent, all right, as we'll show you here, okay, all right, it goes, and this is the chronological history of the kings of you know, Israel and Judah, okay, we know Saul, all right, his son, then David, okay, then Solomon, Solomon forwarded the throne of David 40 years, right, after that, Solomon went off, all right, and then eventually the kingdom split into two, all right, which is what? Israel, all right, or Judah and Ephraim, or Judah and Israel, okay? Now, when you look at the kings of Judah, all right, after Solomon died, you have Rehoboam, all right, he did evil. Abijam, he did evil. Asa, he did right. Jehoshaphat, he did right. And then it goes on down the line, and it tells you either they did evil or they did right. When you look at the 19 uh, kings who sat on the throne of David after Solomon's uh, kingdom was rent, let's count how many did right. One, two, three, four, five, six. With the exception of Joash and Amaziah, they did right at one point, but eventually they went off. So you have six kings of the southern kingdom with Josiah being the last that, you know, stuck to the traditions that did right in the eyes of the Lord, even though they had their points where they went off, okay, you know, they restored righteousness as there were mass rebellions of our people against the Most High, okay? Now, when you go to the Northern Kingdom side, if you notice, all of these kings did evil, all right, except Jehu, who ultimately, um, what he did was, uh, he kept, let's see, when you read about Jehu, I mean, he did good, all right, in a sense that he, uh, you know, was faithful to the Most High, but he allowed, um, yeah, he eliminated the cult of Baal, as you can see here, all right. He eliminated Ahab's heirs, yada, 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 but even though he destroyed the Baal worship, he never took action against the golden calf cult established by King Jeroboam, all right, even so, Jehu enjoys the distinction of being the only king in the separate kingdom of Israel applauded by God for his obedience. So he did good, but he also went off as well. But as you can see, of all of the kings of the northern kingdom, of, the, 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 of Ephraim, okay, pretty much all of them went off. You see, they, they all went off, okay, and then the first captivity we went into was around the time of King Hezekiah, okay? And that's when eventually the uh, northern kingdom left, right? The northern kingdom left, okay? And that goes into what? Daniel 7 and 4, okay? Daniel 7 and 4, all right? This captivity, the first was like a lion and it had eagle's wings, is the Assyrian Babylonian captivity. So in the Assyrian Babylonian captivity, OK, we know that the northern kingdom left and then the Jews, which would be Judah, Benjamin and Levi, went into the Babylonian captivity. The Babylonians sacked the temple. Right. We know that history of the Babylonians sacking the temple. OK, but what was the next captivity? It says, and I beheld another beast. All right. Second, like a bear. And it raised itself up on one side. This is the medial Persian Empire. And we know in those empires, we rebuilt the temple. When you go to the book of Ezra 1, okay, Cyrus made a decree, 
all right, that we would rebuild our temple. So at the forefront of us rebuilding our temple were the Jews. Ezra, all right, one and five, holy vessels restored. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah, all right, and Benjamin and the priest and the Levites with all of them whose spirit God raised up to go up to build the house of Yahweh, which is in Jerusalem. You see that? So it was the Jews. Okay, you have to understand. All right, Ephraim had got caught up into all kind of idols, or the northern kingdom got caught up into all kind of idols. All right, and eventually they left the Assyrian Empire and came over to the Americas. All right, so back in Jerusalem, okay, there was a decree. All right, that the Jews rebuild their temple after the Babylonians had sacked it. And at the forefront of it was Judah, Benjamin and Levi, which ultimately they were just called Jews. All right. The term Jews. All right. Was put on us in that Assyrian Babylonian captivity. OK. Jews is really short for Judah, which is one tribe. All right. But it became a term put on Judah, Benjamin and Levi. You see. So again, let's get the book of Zechariah or let's get the book of uh, Hosea 11 and 12. All right. This is around the time of King Hezekiah. It says, Hosea 11 and 12, Ephraim compassed me about what lies in the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet ruled with the most high and is faithful with the saints. All right. And that would be through King Hezekiah. OK, King Hezekiah. All right. You can read his history. All right. After a great rebellion. All right. Um, you know, under, um, you know, uh, the, the men who sit on the throne before him. OK, uh, he revived the Passover, you know, um, and restored the, the, the ways of righteousness as the northern kingdom was going completely off. We don't have to get too much into that history. But as you can see, all right, Hezekiah, who's of the tribe of Judah, I believe. Yep, he's of the tribe of Judah because he's in Yahweh's lineage. Okay, he was responsible for the customs being kept. And then, as you can see, there was rebellions, and then Josiah eventually restored it. And then, boom, after the Babylonian captivity, all right, you have, you know, uh, in the uh, Medio Persian captivity, you have the likes of Zerubbabel, Ezra, you know, uh, uh, I believe, uh, uh, was it, um, yeah, Nehemiah eventually, you have uh, Zechariah, all right, these were Jews who, all right, stuck to the customs and were fervent, all right, about the temple being rebuilt, you see, so as you go down, you know, the, uh, the line, all right, in this captivity, the next captivity after we rebuilt that temple was the Greek captivity, Okay, so the Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi eventually went into the Greek, the Greek captivity, which let's read some history going into that. What happened in the Greek captivity? Okay, this is the book of First Maccabees chapter 1 and 33, and I'm going to read this in the GNT. So this is all history you should understand. When Paul is saying what advantage or what profit is the Jew or, you know, circumcision, he says much in every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the most high. And this is very important. All right. To our nation. All right. That these particular men. All right. Stood firm for the law, statutes and commandments, kept the customs, fought for the temple. It's very important. All right. That that history took place so that when Yahweh came on the scene, all right, he would have. Uh, uh, you know, groups of Israelites who were Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all right, to follow him because the tents of Judah had to be raised up first. But we'll get into that in just a minute. This is First Maccabees chapter uh, 1 and 33. It says, Then Antiochus and his forces built high walls and strong towers in the area north of the temple, turning it into a fort. They brought in, uh, in a group of traitorous Jews, Jews who were traitors, all right? Remember when you go up in the chapter, many Jews left off, all right, from the ways of righteousness, okay? As you can see here, 
1 Maccabees 1 and 11, in those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen round about. Since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people so full were therein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Wherefore, they built up a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised. This is taking place all right, in the third beast, the Greek captivity, and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen were sold to do mischief. Okay, these were the Jews. So many of them forsook, all right, the covenant and made themselves uncircumcised. All right. And some of them were literally going and sewing skin back on their penises. But really, this is more of a spiritual thing. All right. They left off from the law, statutes and commandments. Right. And they forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen to do mischief. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I had to drink my tea. Try to get the tea in me every day. Now, going back in the GNT, we're going to jump in that same chapter. All right, to verse 34, it says, And Antiochus brought in a group of traitorous Jews and installed them there. He installed them to be leaders, all right, in an area north of the temple. To what? All right. Push those Greco, all right, demonic practices all right, upon the children of Israel to make them uncircumcised so that they can be separated from their power. It says they also brought in arms and supplies and stored in, in the fort all the loot they had taken in Jerusalem. This fort became a great threat to the city. The fort was a threat to the temple. All right. A uh, constant evil menace for Israel. Innocent people were murdered around the altar people who were coming to you know try to get their sins forgiven you know they were they were murdered all right the holy place was defiled by murderers these were israelites set over okay the the uh this temple or this area to put hell on other israelites who were trying to you know worship you how about shimiao shai okay the people of jerusalem fled in fear and the city became a colony a, a foreigners Jerusalem was foreign to its own people who had been forced to abandon the city the Jews got kicked out see that the Jews got kicked out man those who were trying to stick to the tradition they had to flee her temple was empty as a wilderness her festivals were turned into days of mourning her Sabbath days all right into shame her honor became an object of ridicule her shame all right was as great as her uh, her shame was as great as her former glory and her pride was turned into deepest mourning okay this is what happened okay and Antiochus now issued a decree that all nations in his empire should abandon their own customs and become one people same thing going on now all the Gentiles agreed and even many of the Israelites submitted to this decree they adopted the official pagan religion, offered sacrifices to idols, and no longer observed the Sabbath. Okay? You have to understand, all right, that this way of life, all right, was going on all the way up, all right, to the time of the New Testament when you read, all right, uh, you know, about Yahweh Shai, and eventually when you read about the Gentiles, okay, you had many Israelites that adopted the pagan religion, offered sacrifices to idols, okay, and no longer observed the Sabbath. They became heathen in the eyes of the Maccabees, which were Jews, okay, and those joined unto them of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who were like, hell nah, okay? So as you can see, there was a decree, all right, in the towns of Judea that people could not follow the customs, all right? They couldn't offer burnt offerings. They couldn't uh, offer grain offerings or wine offerings in the temple. They couldn't uh, uh, treat the Sabbath days, all right? He could, they were commanded to treat Sabbath days, all right, and feast days as ordinary work days. 
which you're not supposed to work on those days, right? So they, this is what they were forced to do, all right? They were commanded to build pagan altars, temples, shrines, and sacrifice pigs and other unclean animals there. They were forbidden to circumcise their sons and required to, take, uh, to make themselves ritually unclean in every way they could. So that they will forget the law that the Lord had given through Moses and would disobey all its commands. The penalty for disobeying the, the king's decree was death. Okay. So as you can see here, the king not only issued the same decree throughout his own empire, but he also appointed officials to supervise the people and command each town in Judea to offer pagan sacrifices Many of the Jews were ready to forsake the law and to obey these officials. All right. They defiled the land with their evil and their conduct. All right. Forced all true Israelites to hide wherever they could. So as you see, there's a great rebellion. Okay. There's a great rebellion. The, the, uh, the Greeks are forcing the Jews, okay, to be demons. Right to forsake the laws, but as you can see here, all right, verse sixty-two. As you read down, but many people in Israel firmly resisted the king's decree, all right, and refused to eat food that was ritually unclean. They preferred to die rather than break the holy com uh, covenant and eat unclean food, and many did die. Okay, so as you can see here. Some Israelites resisted the king's decree, which brings us to the next chapter. Okay. The faithfulness of Mattathias. Okay. During that time, a priest, all right, of the family named uh, uh, Mattathias, who was the son of John and the grandson of Simeon. All right. These are Jews who knew that they were Jews. They had their records. All right. That settled, they moved from Jerusalem and settled in Modian. All right, then it goes into it. So basically, Mattathias came back to Jerusalem, all right, and he saw all the sins that were being committed. All right, so this is important to understand what Paul is talking about. All right, that the Jews were, to the Jews were committed, the oracles of the Most High. We'll tie it all in in just a minute, but this is history we go into often, but this is history that has to be instilled. OK, then Mattathias, when he saw these things, he said, why was I born to see these terrible things? The ruin of my people in the holy city. Must I sit here helpless while the city is surrendered to enemies? All right. The temple has felt fallen into the hand of, of, of our enemies and foreigners. All right. And when you go to verse 14, OK. <laughs> In their grief, Mattathias and his sons, who were zealous after the law of the temple, put on sackcloth and continued in deep mourning. Okay? Then the king's officials, who were forcing people to turn from the Most High, came to the town of Modin to force the people, all right, there to offer pagan sacrifices. Many of the Israelites came to meet them, including Mattathias and his sons, all right, the king. Of the king's official said to Mattathias, you are a respected leader in this town. You have the support of your sons and relatives. Why not be the first here to do what the king has commanded? Sell out. These are sellouts. Right? All the Gentiles, the people of Judea, and all the people left in Jerusalem have already done so. If you do, you and your sons will be honored with the title of friends of the king and you will be rewarded with silver and gold and many gifts. Put on the dress. <laughs> Mattathias answered, who's the father of Judah Maccabees and the other sons, I don't care if every Gentile in his empire has obeyed the king and yielded to his command to abandon, all right, the law, statutes, commandments, all right, or to abandon the religion of their ancestors, all right, my children, my relatives and I will continue to keep the covenant that God made with our ancestors. With God's help, we will never abandon his law or disobey his commands. We will not obey the king's decree. We will not change our way to worship in the least. Okay. Remember, this is a Jew. 
All right. And as you follow the narrative, these Jews with this mindset. All right. Survived. Some of them survived. OK. And what was committed unto them, the oracles of the most high, because remember, the Greek captivity. OK. Leads into the Roman captivity. And that's when Yahweh Shai eventually came on the scene. He was born while the, what, the fourth beast was going on. But as you can see, all right, from all right, the Babylonian all right, captivity to the Medio Persian captivity, all right, to the uh, Greek captivity, as you can see, it's Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, as we see here in Ezra, all right, going to the, uh, the Medes and the Persians' captivity. All right, you see it was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, okay? And when you read this story, okay, Ezra 2 and 1. Now, these are the children of the province that went out of the captivity of Babylon, right? Of those which had been carried, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried unto Babylon, and came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, everyone into his city, which came with Zerubbabel, see, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Relia, Mordecai, Bilshan, all right, Mispar, and these are the, they all came under Zerubbabel, which at this time we didn't have kings, all right, but he was known as the governor, all right, Zerubbabel would have been the king, all right, had we still had, you know, that government established, all right, but again, as you can see, these are Jews, okay, these are Jews, all right, who are what? Rebuilding the temple. Okay, you go to the the the, uh, the the next captivity. All right, which is okay, the Greek captivity. Who do you see standing firm? It's Jews. Okay, Jews. All right, at the time that many of the Jews fell away, Mattathias said, "Me and my sons and my family." Okay. <laughs> We ain't we ain't changing a damn thing. We sticking to the customs. OK, follow the, the uh, narrative. So as you keep reading here in first Maccabees one. And. Uh, Twenty three after Mattathias finished speaking. All right. One of the men from Modin decided to obey the king's decree and stepped out in front of everyone to offer a pagan sacrifice on the altar that stood there. All right. When Mattathias saw him, he became angry enough to do what had to be done. Shaking with rage, he ran forward and killed the man right there at the altar. He also killed the royal official who was forcing the people to sacrifice. And then he tore down the altar. In this way, Mattathias showed his deep devotion to the law, just as Phineas had done. All right. When he killed Zimri, the son of Salu. All right, and I believe you can go to the book of Numbers to get that history, okay? However, all right, what you must understand is that this, all right, rivalry of those who stuck to the traditions, all right, and those who fell away continued, all right, through this, this all right, third beast, okay, the Greeks, all right, into the fourth beast, which was the, which the Romans, Let's get some background history, all right, on the Maccabean revolt, okay? Because the, the Maccabeans revolted against, all right, the uh, the order, all right, to, you know, fall away from their, you know, worship, man, okay? So as you can see here, Mattathias sparks the uprising, Okay? Again, he's of the, the uh, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. They will be known as the Jews. It says, for Antiochus, all right, the unexpected conquest of the city of Jerusalem, the looting and the wholesale slaughter were not enough. His psychopathic tendency, this Edomite, was exacerbated by res resentment and what that the siege cost him. And he tried to force the Jews to violate their traditional codes of practicing of practice by leaving their infant sons uncircumcised and sacrificing pigs on the altar. So this is where you get the uncircumcision in the New Testament. These are Jews, all right, who are eventually alive, 
a hundred, you know, two hundred years later. All right, from the time of the Maccabees to the time of Yahweh Shai was about a hundred and seventy years. All right, leading to the time of Paul, you know, close to two hundred, you know, plus years. Okay, you had Jews who fell away. They're still Israelites, but they're uncircumcised. This is where you get a Timothy. This is where you get a Titus. Okay. When you deal with the uncircumcision, all right, you have to know this history when you deal with the, the uncircumcision who are offered salvation in the New Testament. Because these uncircumcised Israelites eventually woke up through the teachings of the Jews, all right, who were committed the oracles of the Most High. We'll get to that in just a minute, okay? It says, um, these orders by Antiochus to sacrifice pigs and be demons, all right, were universally ignored, and Antiochus had the most prominent, all right, uh, resuscence, all right, butchered, butchered, meaning those who rebelled. In the aftermath, all right, of Antiochus issuing his decrees forbidding Jews, all right, to practice their religion, a campaign of land conspications paired with shrine and altar building took place in the Judean countryside where they were establishing their image all right a Jewish ritual priest from Modin Mattathias all right of the Hasmonean family and you you, you know if you want to do history on the Hasmonean family all right these were Jews who stuck to the traditions all right priest all right high priest you know but they sold out to a degree but this history must be understood to understand what was going on with the Jews, all right, in the uh, empire of the Greeks leading up to the Romans. Because if you read the Bible, it just go it stops at you know Malachi, which was during the uh, the uh, the the Persian Empire, and then it jumps to Matthew. All right, where is the history of the Israelites in the Greek captivity? Well, we find that in the book of Maccabees, which we're reading about. And that's, all right, eventually where you get the Hasmonean dynasty, okay, which was a dynasty, all right, ruling in Judea surrounding the region during the Hellenistic times, all right, where the Greeks ruled of the Second Temple period, okay? And you can go into that history. But Mattathias, all right, was of that, you know, he, he started that lineage, who stuck to the traditions, right? Family sparked a revolt against the Seleucid Empire by refusing to worship Greek gods, all right, at Modin's, all right, new altar. Mattathias killed a Jew who had stopped, who had stepped forward to take Mattathias's place in sacrificing to an idol, as well as the Greek officer who was sent to enforce the sacrifice. He then destroyed the altar. Afterwards, he and his five sons fled to the nearby mountains. After, Matt, uh, after Mattathias' death, about one year later, his son Judas Maccabees, all right, which Maccabees, I believe, means hammer. Again, there's actual history tied to these people. You can look up outside of the Bible. It says, led a band of Jewish dissidents, all right, that would eventually absor absorb other groups opposed to the Seleucid rule and grow into an army. Okay, these were Jews, Okay. While unable to directly strike the Seleucid power at first, Judas's forces, all right, uh, uh, could maraud the countryside and attack Hellenized Jews. See, they were attacking Hellenized Jews, of whom there were many. So as you can see, those of the circumcision had problem with the uncircumcision to the point where they were fighting them. They were killing them. Okay, the Maccabees destroyed Greek altars and villages, all right, forcibly circumcised boys, all right, they would take those who weren't circumcised and be like, come here, all right, take them, you know, put them in the camp, all right, you got to be circumcised, boom. See, this is a very serious mindset for the Jews, all right, but you have to understand this is some very serious history, all right, it's not like we're saying this history isn't important. All right. And this is what they're basically saying. Paul came on the scene to say to hell with this history, to hell with these Jews who fought for our nation. 
All right? Circumcision, I don't give a damn about circumcision. You don't do nothing. Just be a demon and believe in Jesus. No, that ain't what Paul was saying. But as you can see, the, 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 the Maccabees forcibly circumcised boy and brought him into the camp. Because you have to understand, at that time, all right, they were forcing Jews to be raised in Greek customs. All right? The youth, they was raising the, the, the Jews up, all right, in Greekish fashion, all right? They brought their own land, all right, into Greekish fashion. So you had many leaders of Israel who were down with this because they were getting grants. They would be called the king of the, I mean, friend of the king. So they were doing what? Everything in their power to bring their, their uh, nation into Greekish fashion, including the youth. See if I can find that. All right. Let's see. Boom. Second Maccabees four and nine. Besides this, he promised to assign a hundred and fifty more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise for the training up of the youth in the fashion of the heathen and to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. See, they were trying to force their image upon the youth. All right. You have to go after the youth. Okay. So there you go. So the Maccabean revolt countered that. All right. By forcibly circumcising. All right. The Jews, the little children, the boys of the Jews. All right, and they drove, they burnt villages and drove Hellenized Jews off their land. See, so you can see this is a very, very important history. All right, that now you get the understanding of why there's so much friction in the New Testament surrounding circumcision. You see, but the importance of what I'm bringing out here is when you read, all right, what Paul is saying here, let's get this Romans three and one. What's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value to the ceremony of circumcision? Yes, there are great benefits. First of all, all right, all uh, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of the most high. They were entrusted with what? All right. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the oracles, they passed down the traditions. Cause you have to understand what was Maccabean? What were they? What were they uh what were they passing down? What were they fighting for? The laws, the temple. Okay? Let's go here. Maccabeus. <laughs> Let's see here. That's a story. That's second Maccabees. Second Maccabees. Let's see. Is it Second Maccabees? Maybe 15. <laughs> there you go. Verse 7, because the, the heathen were coming after them. All right. And right here, verse 7, 2 Maccabees 15 and 7. But but Mac, Maccabeus had ever sure, all right, confidence that the Lord would help him. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, the, but, rem, but, but to remember the help which in former times they had, they had received from heaven and now to expect the victory from the almighty. And so comforted them out of the law and the prophets, see, and with all putting them in mind of the battles they won afore, he made them more cheerful. So there you go. He, he again, these traditions, these ways, these oracles. All right. The Jews kept these traditions. Now, when Yahweh Shah came on the scene. OK. You had. All right. These different. 
all right, sects of Jews, camps, they all, all right, stem from that Maccabeus Hasmonean dynasty, all right? There were many sects of Jews in the first century AD, including the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, and Zealots. It was more, right? But these are the ones that you, you know, you know, you go into the New Testament, you read about the Sadducees, the Essenes. Well, you don't read too much about the Essenes, all right? But they're around. You read about the Zealots. You read about the Pharisees, all right? You read about these different camps of Israelites who were around when Yahweh came on the scene. So when Yahweh came on the scene, he gathered from amongst, all right, these Jews. These are Jews. These are people who were born as Jews. These were people who, all right, are descendants of these Maccabean, Hasmonean, all right, empires that stood stiffly for the law. See? Who kept the traditions alive. Okay? Let's get Zechariah 12. Okay? In 7, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, all right, that the glory of the house of David all right, and the glory of the inhabitants of Jer Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah, because Judah is the head tribe, all right, and that's the tribe that Yahweh came from, all right, but the tents of Judah, all right, will consist of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They had to be raised up first to follow Yahweh okay, before the word was sent, all right, and it, it was open to the Gentiles. So it was very important. As you can see that these Jews, all right, as we just went into a little history of what was going on, all right, in these various different empires going from, we, we saw what happened, all right, we know that at the time of the, the, the Assyrian Babylonian, all right, the, uh, the uh, northern kingdom left, right, and then that left Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, okay, in the Babylonian captivity, all right, and they sacked the temple, all right, destroyed it. But at the time of the Medes and the Persians, the Jews were given a decree to rebuild the temple. All right, you have that history. And then at the time of the, the, uh, the uh, Greeks, they attacked the temple and tried to force many of them, all right, to be sodomites and weirdos and not circumcise themselves and not follow the law, statutes, and commandments, but there was a group, a remnant of the Maccabees and those who joined themselves unto them, okay, Jews who, who fought, all right, who, who, who ultimately were like, hell nah. They were putting those different Gentile Israelites to death. You see, Paul himself, <laughs> all right, was putting a lot of these to death because Paul was raised as a Pharisee. As a matter of fact, we were just reading was that Philippians 3? Let's go back there. So again, it's very important, all right, that the Jews, all right, kept the laws of circumcision and that history is very important to our history, all right. However, under Yahweh Shai, it is not the standard, all right, of, be, of getting salvation. And many of even the believing Jews who follow Yahweh Shai had issue with this. That's where when you get the book of uh, Acts, the 15th chapter. See what I'm saying? You get Acts 15. You see this council that has to happen because there were certain men saying, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. You have to understand this tension that we're reading about this tension all right went on all right for more than close to 200 years all right so this was a fixated tension all right it was very very serious all right that those who were of the circumstances they were like hell nah you see what i'm saying <laughs> so as paul all right, who, when you read about Paul, all right, let's read this in the NLT. He was one of those Jews. He, he was a descendant of those Jews who stuck to the traditions. Oh, there we go. Damn, internet went out. All right. 
I think I got everything I need up, so I'm good. But as you can see here, Paul is saying, if anyone could boast in the flesh, you know, in those customs, I can. Circumc I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. I was one of the Pharisees. Okay? <laughs> the Pharisees, all right? All right, they they uh when you when you follow them they they were into outward appearance they were strict about customs and things like that. But Paul is saying here, look, I was raised a Pharisee. See, concerning zeal, I persecuted the church of Yahushai, touching righteousness, uh, touching the righteousness what is in the law, blameless. So he was put in the death. He followed that tradition, going back to Mattathias and the Maccabees, putting those the, those different. <laughs> You know, unclean, you know, unclean Jakes to death as some of these unclean Jakes were waking up out of that uncircumcised state, following the law, statutes and commandments to the best of their ability through Yahweh Shai, faith in Yahweh Shai. Paul was like, hell no. Nah. The Jews were like, hell no. Nah. These niggas did not fight for our nation. They are not responsible for these traditions in the temple being kept. We. All right. Reign preeminent. OK, so this caused friction, even in the book of Acts, as we were showing you. Acts 15 and five, but there arose up a certain sect of the Pharisees, which believed in Yahweh Shai, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. This tension came all goes all the way back to what we're reading here. All right. In the book of Maccabees. OK. In, in this history that we're going into. You see. So. As the internet went out, I'm going to just end it. But what Paul is saying here, okay, let's read it again. Romans 3 and 1. Then what's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value in the ceremony of circumcision? Yes, there are great benefits. First of all, the, the, the Jews were committed the oracles of the Most High. So in order for the Gentiles to be brought into the fold, okay, the Jews who believed in Yahweh Shai had to go out preaching. See, and then they will receive the sure mercies of David through belief in that testimony. OK. True. All right. Some of them were unfaithful, the Jews. But just because they were unfaithful, does that mean God will be unfaithful? Just because you had many of the Jews that didn't believe and follow Yahweh Shah, does that mainly believe, uh, mean that? All right. Uh, uh, the, the, the most high is unfaithful just because the temple became defiled and many of the leaders sold out. Does that mean, mean the Most High is not faithful? No, the truth still came out of those Jews. The truth still came out of the temple. John the Baptist came from a family who was what? In the temple. He was after the order of uh, Aaron. He was in that line. But he left the temple and went into the wilderness to preach Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, so. Let's see here. We're going to read this, all right, because this pretty much highlights and nails home the point. All right. Let's uh, let's start at thirty nine. This is uh, Peter speaking. All right. It says, and we are witnesses of all things. All right. Which he did both in the land of the Jews. All right. And in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. So the disciples and the followers of Yahweh Shai, who were Jews, all right, they were, you know, raised as Jews, but they believed, okay, they witnessed all of the things Yahweh Shai did. They witnessed, all right, him even after he resurrected, right? Again, this is the oracles being committed unto them because it didn't stop at just being a Jew. You had to be a Jew who was a follower of Yahweh Shai. Then it says, him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before God. All right. Even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. All right. Now, Paul gives you that understanding here in 1 Corinthians 15 of who saw him after he rose from the dead. <laughs> Let me go. Okay. 
as Peter is speaking, it is Paul, this first Corinthians 15 and five. And he was seen of Cephas, then of the 12. And after that, he was seen of a, of a, of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part of us remain into the present. Some have passed away. After that, he was seen of James, then all of the apostles. All right. And then lastly, he was seen of me. All right. So this is Paul speaking. So the Jews, okay, who were raised as Jews, all right, that were with Yahawashai, they witnessed all of the miracles, okay? They witnessed him after he resurrected. And then, as you can see here, God raised him up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before the Most High, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of the most high to be judge of the quick and dead. So as they went and preached, okay, they were preaching, but eventually some of these Gentiles who were scattered, they started to wake up. They started to hear about the fame of Yahweh Shah. They started to want to know what was up. All right. To him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believe it, all right, in him shall uh, receive remission of sins. Whether you Jew or Gentile, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them that which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed on Yahweh Shai, were astonished. And as many as came with uh, Peter, because that the on the Gentiles, OK, who they had for years looked down upon for the, who they had for years said, hell nah. All right. The Gentiles. All right. Was poured up the gift of the Holy Spirit. OK, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify the most high. Then Peter answered, can any man forbid water? Can you forbid the spirit that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we, we being the Jews? OK, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then uh, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So, again, the preaching of the Jews led to the Gentiles having all right the jews who follow yahweh shai all right the gentiles had a word to believe on man a way back in okay that's why uh, uh ephesians 2 and 12 in times past all right you were called uncircumcision by the circumcision but in yahweh shai you're good all right acts 11 and 1 and the apostles and brethren that were in judea heard that the gentiles had also received the word of the most high and when Peter was coming to Jerusalem, they of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and ate with them. Again, this was a no-no. This was a no-no to the Jews to, to, to chill with those who fell away. But Peter broke it down, dealing with Cornelius, how the Lord showed them that he was going to cleanse some of the Gentiles, man. So... see here Let's see here three and nine well then should we conclude that we jews are better than others no not at all for we have already shown that all people, whether Jew or Gentile, are under the power of sin. See? And the law was only given to the Israelites. So we all are guilty when it comes to that covenant. Both Jew and Gentile. See? As the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. So we all need Yahweh Shai. You see? Let's see here. So that's... You know. Verse 19, obviously the law applies to those to whom it was given for its purpose is to keep the people from having excuses and to show that the entire world of Israel basically is guilty before the most high. OK, but many of the Jews thought, you know, that because they fought for that, you know, the, the you know, the holy place to be kept. All right. And that they did all of those 
good deeds that ultimately now this would reject the Gentiles from coming in. Okay? No one could be made right with the Most High by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. You see, we can't be justified by the law, but through faith in Yahweh Shai. Okay? But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. So what the what the Jews did was very, very important. It's just that Yahweh Shai came and showed us a better way of applying the law, a better way of being made right with the Most High through obedience. All right? As was promised into Moses in his writings in the prophets long ago. We are made right with the Most High by placing our faith in Yahweh Shai. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are, whether you were raised as a Jew or whether you were raised as a heathen. And now you're putting off those heathenistic customs and coming into the fold. All right. You're, you're through faith in the message of Yahweh Shai. You're good. For everyone has sinned, both Jew and Gentile. We all fall short of God's standard. Okay. So. Ooh, it goes in man this whole thing is it's just going into it all right so we're going to end it off in romans the 15th chapter all right let's just go to the point romans 15 and 7 wherefore receive ye one another as yahweh shai also received us to the glory of the most high now i say that yahweh shai was a minister of the circumcision all right, for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto our fathers. All right. Let's get this in the NLT. This pretty much seals the deal on what we're saying. Remember that Yahweh Shai came as a servant to the Jews to show that God is true to the promises he made to their ancestors. All right. And ultimately, that was the, 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 the building block of the church. All right. But the Gentiles will be brought in. All right. As it is prophesied through the mercies of David. All right. Through belief. All right. On what the Jews were going out there preaching of Yahweh Shai. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written for this cause, I will confess thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again, he said, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Remember, the Gentiles were looked at as a no people. So now rejoice ye Gentiles, all right, with the Jews, okay? We're all one, okay? You had those, those weirdos from Boston talking about, well, this, why would it say with his people if they're all his people? Well, again, you have to understand the context, the narrative, the history. These, all right, Gentiles were looked at as a no people. Remember in the book of Acts, they were called another nation, Alos Philos. All right. Which ultimately the Jews looked at. All right. These Gentiles as common, unclean, unhallowed, not acceptable. So now in Yahweh Shai, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles. All right. And laud him, all ye people. Give me one second here. And again, Isaiah said there shall be a root of Jesse, which is Yahweh Shai. And he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles and him shall the Gentiles trust. All right. And that's going into uh, Isaiah, the 11th chapter, which is showing you when you get that to show you these are talking about Israelites. Let's get Isaiah 11. <laughs> Isaiah, the 11th chapter. And the first verse and there shall come. Forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, David's father, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is speaking of Yahweh Shai. Okay. Verse 10. And that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass, all right, that the, the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. Egypt, Pathros, Cush, all right, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and from the islands of the sea, and shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble, all right, the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth, all right, 
The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. See, and that would all be done under Yahweh Shai. He is that ensign to whom these scattered Gentiles would have to seek. All right. But ultimately, it all goes back. All right. To when Yahweh Shai established his church under Peter. You see? But again, that church would be raised up in the latter days here in Babylon the Great. But again, these scattered Israelites, their only way back in would be through, all right, the testimony, through belief in Yahweh Shai. All right. So these scattered Israelites, all right, are the Gentiles, as we just read. So again, all right, Romans 15, all right, and uh, 8. Remember, Yahweh Shah came as a servant to the Jews to show that God is true to his promises. Again, remember, the tents of Judah had to be raised up first, man. OK. Let's see here. Romans 15 and 12 in another place, Isaiah said that the heir to David's throne, Yahweh Shah will come and he will rule over the Gentiles. All right. They will place their hope in him. All right. And that's us. OK, that's us, man. You know, receiving mercy outside of the technicalities of the law, but through faith and what we heard and what we heard, that message started. All right. With Peter and the other disciples who were with you, how shy who went out preaching, man. OK, so to the Jews. were committed. The oracles of the most high. OK. Hopefully y'all are edified. On to the next. Shalom.